All right, so let me quickly explain the new flowchart because it's definitely not as intuitive as the other ones. Okay, let's run it down. Um, let's run it down, probably bad phrasing for league content, but okay, which misfortune build is the best? First question you ask yourself, is your team full AD? If yes, you go the rank one Korean build, Dark Harvest, Lethality, full Lethality. So some of you are asking, why full lethality if your team is full AD? Isn't that super counterintuitive? Doesn't the enemy beat you even harder by stacking armor? But that's the thing. With this build, you actually, I mean, especially in this full AD comp, you accept you accept the fact, okay, we either win pre-20 minutes or we just lose anyway. If you go, I don't know, a late, better late game crit build or whatever, you still lose late game because the enemy can just buy armor very efficiently and you have no chance of de ever dealing with their tanks or frontline. So you just go this Dark Harvest build, you stomp the lane ideally, and then you finish before the enemy can even buy their armor. That's the plan here. So I think this is a little bit better, a little bit more consistent than the AP version, simply because AP Misfortune is very bad comparatively, and this build is extremely, extremely strong if played correctly. Okay, so this is if your team is full AD. If your team is not full AD, then you have to ask yourself, is your support strong in lane? If no, then you can't really be proactive, you can't make many plays, you just have to sit back and scale alongside them. Not strong in lane usually means enchanter support, so think of, I don't know, Soraka, Yumi, um, Janna, all these supports who are not that proactive, who more like sit back and need their strong enchanter items to scale, you just scale alongside them, you play very safely, you sit back, you max Q, and you get a lot of mileage out of your Q by going max AD Misfortune. You get as much attack damage as humanly possible. Misfortune scales extremely well with attack damage. So man, I mean first item, still Doran's Blade start, so you're not that abusable in lane. Uh, also because you don't buy life still until relatively late. So man, I mean start, and then Essence Reaver second. Yes, there's also a little bit counterintuitive at first glance, because man, I mean fixes your mana and all your mana runes, right? So why Essence Reaver? First of all, you can still go Oom. Um with this because you spam your spells so much. Secondly, Misfortune is crazy strong with Sheen effects, only thing holding her back is her low base AD, which, um, you know, Sheen works off of base AD, so low base AD means less uh, reward for spamming your Sheen procs, but Essence Reaver has a bonus AD ratio, and you have as much AD as possible with Manamine first in this rune page, so Essence Reaver will deal huge damage, also more cooldown reduction means more Q spam, and then if you want to go full aggressive, you go, you're already nuking them with Q at this point, two items. And then if you go no very quick blades, you get even more Qs because uh, every single Q and every auto attack will refund your cooldowns. And uh, you have 8% bonus damage because 40% uh, crit already, 8% bonus damage on Q. Also way bigger ulties with no very quick blades. Um, and only then do you go your mythic shield bow and then last whisper item and last item bloodthirster for the full 100% crit or how much is it? 20% damage increase on your spells. But uh, you can, this is a little bit greedy, then if you want a safer mid game, you can also go um, shield bow second if you really, really want to, but I think shield bow third is a good sweet spot here, because Madame and Essence Reaver is such a good power spike, and then shield bow third, Navori fourth. Again, these builds are still evolving, I ca these are only one, these flowcharts are one snapshot in time, and I keep experimenting, I keep pushing, so we can develop the meta, but yeah, this is the idea of this build, it is the best late game build you can have. Misfortune with attack damage is, is so ridiculously strong and with infinite mana so you can spam your, all your spells, you are really tough to deal with for the enemy once you get to, uh, even just mana immune, essence reaver, shield bow, you're really really tough to deal with. And these three items of course you one shot everyone but you also get one shot by everyone so keep that in mind. And is your support strong in lane? No, sure, now we have covered that. If they are strong in lane, you definitely want to take advantage of that. If they're heavy all in support or a huge damage poke support like Zyra, for example, you can double down on the pressure the enemy is feeling. But there are two ways of doing this. And the question, funnily enough, you're asking yourself is, how experienced are you with Misfortune? If you are not very experienced, like you don't know how to manage your mana, um, you don't know how to trade super efficiently, you don't know how to, you, know, you need more margin for error essentially, then you go this build because there's way easier to play. It's very effective still and super easy to play, and especially after overheal buff and bloodthirster buff, it's super good. Um, it ha doesn't have any mana regeneration too, but you have a lot of attack speed, so you don't need your spells as much, so it should also be easier if you don't know how to manage mana. And yeah, it's, it's essentially the good of Bloodthirst and Misfortune. You go Kraken Slayer first, Bloodthirst second, and then 
Yeah, Inf Infinity Edge, not a good item on Misfortune, unless you have a bunch of bonus AD, because Misfortune has such low base AD and, well, her old, sc old scalings in her kit. Most champions, most AD carries thrive off of their, um, not old scalings, crit scalings. Most AD carry champions thrive off of those and want Infinity Edge second. Caitlyn, for example, direct crit scaling on her headshots. Misfortune doesn't have that. She has a crit scaling on her ult, but it's laughably weak. So, buying Infinity Edge as late as possible is definitely the way to go. You go Kraken Slayer, Bloodthirster, then Blade of the Ruined Kings, what I recommend. It's a super good item, especially since Bloodthirster has less lifesteal nowadays. And Misfortune, one of the best lifesteal users in the game, one of the best Bloodthirster shield users, one of the best overheal users. So, you definitely want that. Super strong three item power spike. Even just two items, you can already take over the game pretty much. And then last Whisper item, then last item Infinity Edge, then sell boots for um, Phantom Dancer. And if you are experienced in Misfortune, if you're confident, in your um, calcs, right? Pre before a situation happens, can you predict how it turns out? How um, how you're going to win this? If you can win this, if you have the damage, can you manage your mana efficiently? Can you do all that? Can you position well? Because this build also got no boots. This build at least got magical boots until you sell them. This build has berserkers, of course. This build, no boots. So hyper offense, zero defense in your build. Boots are a defensive item mind you. So if you have confidence that you can actually make use of Misfortune's early power, this build is the real deal. It is the build the um, best Misfortune player in Korea is using, and many people are copying them. So you um, essentially, as I've said in the beginning, you want to snowball the early game as much as possible, and uh, then you want to win the game before the enemy can start outscaling you, because this build will get outscaled eventually by crit AD carries. But Ideally, you just stomp the enemy so hard that they can't recover and that they lose in the mid-game. Even if you don't win lane outright in the mid-game, this build's still mega strong compared to other AD carries, so you just uh, snowball from there and win. So even if your support kind of sucks, it's still definitely playable. It's definitely one of the best builds you can play right now, period. I have a full explanation video on my main channel, actually. I'll link it on the screen so you can check that out. And uh, yeah, good luck, have fun.